This is Dr. Steve Nielsen. I'm from Shelley, Idaho. I've had the CERAC unit for a while and I've done some pretty amazing things with it. I'm pretty impressed at the capability that I have, especially when I make mistakes. This particular tooth is, uh, you saw the final picture to start with. This is where we started and it's got some issues. It's got some cracks on the distal, out the lingual, but there's some pretty good lingual structure there and actually some pretty good structure on the buckle. I'm going to show you the preparation I did. I call this a crown lay and I came down the buckle to pick up that alloy that was on the on the buckle and on the lingual I uh, tried to take out that crack down a ways but still maintain a little bit of uh, protection there and get this camera back up and roll over the other side again there we go and you can see a pretty deep hole where the alloy was but I found that this uh, wasn't actually a good preparation because right here in this distal lingual corner the software told me that it was too thin now, if this had been done at the lab, I would have had to send it back, you know, new impression and re-preparation. Two weeks later, come back and try it again. In this situation, I was able to go back in about five minutes, make a difference. Just re-prep it real quick on that distal lingual cusp, re-image just that section, and I'd like to show you how I did that. I'd like you to notice that all the photography on this uh, video was done with the 2D imaging as well as, of course, the 3D imaging when I'm imaging the actual preparation. But everything is done with the Omnicam. Pretty impressive. So as I go back to the acquisition area, it gives us a warning that you can't do that. So I'm going to have to unlock the tools. And then I'll just uh, bring up my cut tool. And all I'm going to do is just cut out the center of the tooth, which is where I re-prepped it. Not much really preparation, but I can still maintain my contact points of my adjacent teeth and actually my margins. I'm just going to cut out the middle, kind of go over the lingual a little bit, but I'll apply that and uh, there we have a hole. And we'll just turn the camera back on and try and get this thing filled in pretty quick. It takes a second to recapture the connection here and uh, here we go. And we'll just uh, bring it up over the clusal, down the lingual, and the camera really likes perpendicular, so I'm going to try and come around perpendicular to the lingual there. And fill in that space. Looks like we're about done. That should do it. So let's take a look at the model here that we've got. And a little flash flying around here and there. Actually, some from before as well. So I think while I'm here, I'm going to cut out some extra flash and uh, make this model just a little cleaner. And we'll just loop it around. I'm going to go all the way around here and just do all this in one fell swoop. It's really easy to do. Just kind of circle everything I don't want. And we'll come and close that. Click Apply. Turn off the Cut Tool. And there we are. Nice clean model. So now as we uh, go forward, we're going to find that the preparation or the design looks pretty good. I'm going to change my minimum thickness up to about 1500 so that it's really where I can see how thick the areas are. And it looks really nice. Maybe a little bit on that distal lingual still. Turns out that distal lingual is only 1.46 in thickness there, so I'm not too worried about that little bubble on that distal lingual corner. I'll just take my minus tool and I'll just erase a little bit, a little bit of that turquoise off just down to where it gets to the blue. And pretty quick, pretty fast, hardly even tell the difference in the design. I'm going to add a little bit to that facial. Looks like I got a, a cusp there that needs to be a little bulkier, and we can change that real quick. We'll just add it right up there. And there we go. Puts it right in together. So as we go from here now, we're going to move over to the uh, Emacs Blue State and check it out. See how close that matches up. Looks pretty good. Check that distal lingual curvature there a little bit. Pretty decent. So now let's switch over to the uh, next step, which is the crown itself. And here we have the final crown, and it's looking pretty good blends in quite well and uh, come across the occlusal. You can see we did a little custom staining there in the, in the occlusal grooves and it looks pretty nice. So what I'd like to do now is uh, take a look at what it looks like with both the before and after and you can see what kind of thing we can we can actually achieve with the CERAC unit. As we move back over there we can see we've got quite a change. We've been able to fix our errors very easily and produce a crown that we can be confident in that the thickness is not going to be a problem because I verified that and actually fixed it within just a few minutes.